methods. So basically we could say that the main activity is indirectly accessing all the properties from the most important or the super class activity. Now what happens is that when you run your activity, your activity goes through a certain number of states. So for example, when we are loading up your application onto your emulator, what happens is that this main activity enters into the first state which is called as the onCreate. And onCreate is nothing but a state in which your activity starts creating itself. For example, uh, the onCreate state is basically used in order to set up everything for your activity. So this onCreate is basically like loading, it is used for loading up the content on your application. So it sets the layout, it adds the text boxes and all the widgets which we have used in our application. So this is one of the states of our application and an Android application or the Android activity has a lot of states. For example, it has on create, on destroy, on pause, on resume and all those kinds of states. And if you want to develop Android applications, so it is the basic requirement that we understand all these stages. Now in this tutorial what we are going to do is that we are going to study all the states one by one by printing the log information on our Android application so that we could understand how the Android activity enters from one state to another. So what we are trying to achieve is that we are trying to print out the current state of our activity onto the output screen or onto the emulator. So in order to do that uh, we will need to import some classes. So the first thing which we will need to import is the log. So in order to import it, we type import, then we type android dot util dot log. And if you're familiar with the basic concepts of Java, you might have understood what I've done here. I've basically imported the log package, which is present in the android dot util. And this basically allows us in order to print out the log info. So once we are done with this, the next thing which we need to do is we need to go into this public class main activity and inside it we are going to create a string. So in order to create a string, we type private static final string and let's say we name the string as tag and we type this equals, let's name the string as my message. So we type my message. Now once we are done with this, the next thing which we do is as we need to print out the log information in the onCreate method or the onCreate state. So we go inside this onCreate and inside it we type the basic uh, log information. So in order to display out the log information, we type log.i and it is going to contain two parameters. The first parameter is going to be the string. So in this case we have the string which is nothing but the tag. And the next thing which we want to print out is the state. So for example, in this case, we want to print out on create. So we just copy this and we paste it so that we could understand that the activity has entered the on create state. Now just give a semicolon. So basically what we are trying to achieve is that we want to print out the log information in each and every activity state so that we could understand in which state is the current activity is present. So in the next tutorial, we are going to add some other activities such as on resume, on pause and on stop. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this tutorial and this tutorial is going to be the continuation of the previous tutorial in which we were studying the states of the activity. So in this tutorial, we are going to add up some more states of the activity so that we could understand in which state the particular activity is. Now we already have this on create activity with us, which was predefined in our program. Now we want to make sure that we also add the other activities such as the on start, on resume, on pause, on stop and all the other activities which we want. So in order to add those activities, instead of typing in the code right here, what you could do is that you could use a method or you could use a technique which is called as the code completion. Now in order to use code completion, you simply click on the place where you want to insert your code and hold the alter key on your keyboard and simply press insert. So once you click that, you are going to get a set of options which will paste some code depending upon your selection. Now in this case, we want to include the override methods. So we are going to select the option for override methods and it is going to give us a lot of options inside the override method. Now inside it, we want to select a method which is the on start method. So as there are a lot of method over here, you could just click on some method and in order to search for your method, you could just type in your method. So we want on start 
so as you could see we have our method which is on start right over here so we simply click this method and hit ok and it is going to include an on start method for us now once you have your on start method with you the next thing which you need to do is that you need to copy this log message into the on start method so that it could be displayed when the on start method is executed so we just simply copy this go in the on start method and just paste it over here once we are done copying this we are going to replace this on create by on start so we type on start also we have to include some more methods like the on pause and on resume so i go ahead and write those methods as well so again if you want to insert some code you hold on the alt key then press the insert key and then finally we go to the override methods in order to select the methods which we want now in order to search our method which is on resume we type on resume and if you go a few lines down here you could find the on resume method so click ok and let's import other such methods by using the same technique so the next method which we want to import is the on pause again alter insert override methods on pause click ok now once i'm done adding all the methods i'll go through the methods which i've added so the first method which we have added is the on start then we have added the on resume then we have added on pause then we have added the on stop method then we go to the on restart then we go to on destroy then we have the two big methods which is on save instance that is going to save the instances for us and then also in order to restore the instances we have on restore instance state so make sure that you add up all these things or all these methods into your application now the next thing which we want to do is we want to copy this log message and we want to paste the log message in each and every method so just copy it and make sure that you have the proper message with it so for example instead of this on start we are going to have on resume and make sure that you make the same change in each and every method right here so that we are able to identify these method correctly so once you are done adding the log messages to all your methods your code is going to look like this so we have the method then we have added the log message and inside the log message we have replaced uh, the message by the name of the method so make sure that you have your code everything set up like this now if you have missed adding some code in your application then make sure that you pause this video and watch each and every line of code and make sure that it is added onto your application so basically we have added our code from here so the first method which we have added is on start and we go on adding the methods and our last method which we have added is the on restore instance state now once you are done writing the code in your application you go to the main.xml and you simply run your application by clicking on this button and your emulator is going to start for you so as you could see our app has successfully been launched into the emulator but the main thing is that we needed to keep an eye on the log messages which we have printed out and those log messages are going to be displayed into this console right here but the thing is that it is going to display each and every event which occurs on the emulator but we actually want the messages which we have printed out so if you could notice there are some of the messages like on create and on start which are displayed in the console but the thing is that if you don't want the other messages to be displayed and if you want that only the messages which are displayed by us should be popped up then you could do that by going into this option and you click on this edit filter configuration and we are going to create a filter which is used in order to filter out the messages which are only required by us so we go ahead and create a new filter let's name this filter as my filter and inside the lock tag we display the message name which we have used for example our message name in this case was my message so in the lock tag we type my message and when we click ok as you could see the only events with the my message tag are going to get displayed so as you could notice here the first state of our activity was was on create and on create basically happens when our application loads up the ui and everything for us then we have the on start and that is pretty much going to start our application then finally we have the on resume state and on resume state is nothing but when the activity is just present on the phone so now if you hit the back button it is going to pause the activity and we get the on pause state and after the on pause state we get the on stop stage and in the on stop stage the application completely stops its execution and finally 
we have the on destroy state which destroys the resources which are held up by our application now what happens if we start our application once again so we go into the menu we select our application and as you could see the on create state has started again which loads up the layout for us then we have the on resume this time we are not going to click the back button but instead we are going to click the home button and when we click the home button what happens is that the activity enters into the on pause state so the application is paused for the moment and then we have on save instance which is going to save the instance for us so when we get back to the application all our data is going to get saved and we could use it and finally we have the on stop state in which the application stops performing now if we again go back and we op if we open our app it is going to show us on resume so that means we have resumed the execution of our application so those are some different states of our activities so basically we have studied the on start on resume on pause on destroy and on create states and it is extremely important to know these states while developing android applications and that is because we need to take care of certain things in the applications which are nothing but the user data for example if you want to create an application that the data should be preserved when the user exits out of the app then it is very necessary to understand all these cases or all these states so that you could use them to your advantage so that's it for this tutorial and i hope you understood all the states and why states are used in activities and how you could use them to your advantage so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be learning how you could create your own user interface from scratch now in the previous tutorial we have already designed this user interface so basically it was a drag and drop and we have already used a template which had this uh, like the design and we did not create our application from zero so in this tutorial what we are going to do is that we are going to create our own user interface from scratch so basically we are going to create a new project so in order to create a new project simply go on file go to new and select new project and let's name it as my new app then click next now you want to make sure that you have clicked this phone and tablet option and that is because we have de we are developing applications for just phone and tablet now if you were to develop applications for wear or tv then you could select these options right here so in this case we are going to stick with phone and tablet and the api level which i am going to use is 15 which is nothing but the ice cream sandwich now click next so as in this case we don't want any content on our activity we are going to select the empty activity then we click next and the name of our main activity is nothing but main activity then we click finish and our project is going to load up in a new window so as you could see we have two projects right here now as we are not working with our first project we simply close out of this window and now we have our second project which is my new app and this app consists of the same things as the previous app but the thing is that we don't have any content onto our screen now as you could see there is some content on our screen so we make sure that we delete it and that is because we want to learn how we could develop our own applications from scratch so once you are done deleting with it the next thing which we want to do is we want to add our own text onto it so in order to add our own text inside the widgets folder we are having a large text option so you simply click it and just drag and drop it onto your screen so let's keep it there now let's say we want to change the text of this so we simply select it and go to properties so as you could see the text is displaying large text so we simply click on it and we type login so as you could see it is displaying the message login now make sure that you place it properly now the next thing which we are going to do is that we are going to add two text boxes to it so as to accept the email and the password so now if you want to add the email you simply go to this text field right here and the first field is going to be the email so you make sure that you click it and drag it over your application and as you could see we have the field for entering our email now the next thing which we want to enter is password so again go to the text field click password drag it onto your application and then place it 
So as you could see, this is the basic interface of our login application or the login screen. Now the next thing which we want is we want a button which allows user to submit his login data. So again, we go here and we select the option of a button. So we click the button, drag it and drop it over here. Now, if you want to change the text of this button, simply click on it and in the properties go to text and change this text to let's say login now if you want to change the position you could do so just by dragging dragging and dropping this button to any of the position desired so now let's say i want to place it here so i simply drag it and drop it over so now we have successfully created the user interface for our android login screen now i wanted to show you one more way of doing this and that is the hard way so in order to do the do it you simply go on to this XML file when you click on this text you could access your XML file and you need to add each and every field by typing some code into it so for example in order to enter a button or in order to add a button you simply type in this code and at, that is going to set up a button for you but this design approach is a lot easier as compared to just writing code for your Android application so it saves you a lot of time and it also saves you from syntax errors while writing your Android tag. So in this tutorial, we have pretty much learned how you could design a basic simple login screen for your Android application. Now in the next tutorial, we are going to go through the same designing part and we are going to learn some more important things about designing your UI. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we will be designing the user interface of our Android application. Now this tutorial is going to be the continuation of the previous tutorial in which we have designed this basic login screen for our application and now in this tutorial we are going to study about some things which are called as resources. But before directly jumping into the resources the first thing which I need to mention is we need to learn how you could change the text into this login button. So for example, let's say if you want to name this button as something different, then one way of doing this would be just clicking on it, going to properties and just changing the text property right over here so that you could replace the text in this box and it is going to change the text for you. But one more method or one more way of doing this is by going into the XML file. So if you open up your XML file, you'll see that the button lies over here. So as we want to change the text of this login button, we could simply select this property of Android, which is Android colon text, and it is going to change the text for us. So let's say if you want to change the text from login to let's say click here. So we simply type in click here. And as you could see, the text has been changed. So even if we switch to the design view, you could see that the text in the button has been changed. Now one more thing which I want to discuss is how you could increase the size of this text area. So for example, in this login screen, we have two text areas. One is to accept the email and the next one is to accept the password. Now let's say you want to increase the size of this text area. So let's say the username or the email is going to be a bit longer than this then how you could increase the size of so let's attempt to change the size of this two text areas by using the xml file so when we go in our xml file you'll notice that we have two text areas so this edit text is basically for the email so when you click on it it is going to highlight your text area so now in order to increase the size of this text area, we are going to type some simple code. So as you could see, the width of your text area is not yet mentioned here. So we go into this edit text tag and we simply type in Android colon width and then we are going to type the width which we want to specify. Now the thing is that you could specify the width in pixels, but the issue with pixels is that the size of every pixel on every different device is going to be different. So instead of using pixels directly, we are going to use a unit for defining pixels, which is called as the density pixels. So in this case, I think that 320 density pixels would be sufficient width for our text area. So we go ahead and type Android width equals 320 DP and DP stands for density pixels. So now we are done adding that as you could see the size of the text area has been increased. Now if you copy the same code and if you paste it in your password field or your password tag, it is also going to change the size of your password field. So as you could see, we have increased the size of both the email area as well as the password area. So now once we are done with this, we switch on to the design view and the next we are going to discuss in this tutorial is going to be the resources. So you might have noticed that when you click on this button, 
you are going to get a light bulb on side of it and this light bulb is nothing but it specifies some warning that means we have done something incorrect now in order to check the warning you simply click on this button and as you could see there is a small arrow right over here which points towards the right then you simply need to click on this arrow and you want to add a resource now before adding up the resource there is a thing which i need to explain so basically whenever you are going to create your android application and whenever you are going to have some text into your android application every text which we use in our application we need to make sure that the text which we are entering should be treated as a resource so we cannot just directly jump in and we could not add any text directly onto your activity so when we click on this light bulb over here and when we click on it it prompts us to name the resource so for example this is our resource which is nothing but the string which we have specified in the button so let's name this thing as let's say button name and let's click ok so as you could see when i click it the text is going to disappear and instead of it we are going to get like add string slash button name now if you switch to your text view you could see that it appears like click here over here now the thing is that all the resources which are related to our android applications are stored in this app folder so if you click on app folder and then we have a folder which is called as resources which is going to hold each and every resource which is required for our android application so if you click on it you could see that we again have a folder which is called as values and if you open this values folder you are going to get a xml file which is going to store all the strings for us so this is the xml file which is called as strings and it is going to contain reference to each and every string so when we open up the xml file we are going to notice that each and every string which is used in our application is stored as a resource in this particular strings.xml file so as you could see we have the string name which is nothing but the button name and inside it we have stored the value which is click here so the main purpose of the string.xml file is to store each and every string used in our application as a resource and it is going to refer to each and every string which is stored in our application. So now once we switch on to the activity main.xml we are going to notice that the text has been changed to click here. So that's it for this tutorial and in this tutorial we have learned how you could change the text of the button or the text area by using the xml file. We have also learned how you could resize your text areas and we have also learned about resources and strings so how strings in your android application are being treated as resources and they are going to be stored in a special xml file which is called as the strings.xml so thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you in the next tutorial thank you hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be learning how you could design the user interface of your android application by using the java code now in the previous tutorials we have already learned a method for creating the user interface and the first method which we have studied is the direct dragging and dropping of elements onto the user interface and the next method was by using the xml code so basically we could use the xml tag in order to change the user interface so by using xml tags we could enter buttons text views and all that kinds of stuff onto our application page or onto our activity now in this tutorial we'll be learning how to design the user interface by purely using java code so for this tutorial we'll be creating a new project so you go ahead and create a new project and let's name it as my new app so we name the project and we click next and make sure that you have selected the api level 15 now click next and in this case we are going to select the blank activity now once you have selected it click on next now let's say the name of the activity is main activity now click finish and now once everything is set up you just go into this xml text right over here and what we are going to do is that we are going to delete each and every component which is present right now in our application so basically we delete this text view right here and once we delete it the next thing which we do is we go on, go on to our main activity.java file and we are also going to delete some of the things from here so basically here we have the public class main activity and what we are going to do is that we are going to go inside this on create method right over here and we are going to delete everything right from the toolbar so make sure that you delete it so once you have deleted that the next thing which we do is we also delete these methods and that is because we are not going to be needing them so go ahead and just delete all these things now another thing which you need to do is that 
we have the public class main activity which extends app compact activity and now what we are going to do is that we are going to remove this entirely so we are going to name it as public class main activity extends activity and this activity package is present in the android.app.activity so make sure that you have imported it and now as you could see we have nothing else on our layout screen now once everything is deleted and cleared the next thing which we need to do is we need to go into this main activity.java file and we need to start writing the java code for designing our interface so before designing the interface the thing which we need to do is that we need to use a certain layout so that the elements are placed in the screen in that manner so in this case we'll be using relative layout now what relative layout means is that each and every element which is present on our activity is going to be placed in relation to each other so if you don't understand relative layout right now so you need to hold on and it will make more sense when we go into the depth of this tutorial so now one more thing which we want to do is that we need to remove these imports as well because they don't make any sense as we will not be using them right now. So make sure you delete that and it is just going to clean up your code. So we'll be only dealing with those methods or those codes which we are going to use. Now the next thing which we want to do is that we want to import the layout. So in order to import the layout we go here and type import android dot widget as the layout is present in the widget package so we type android dot widget and then dot relative layout as we'll be using the relative layout now once we have imported it successfully the next thing which we want to do is that we want to import a button now let's say that we want to add a button onto our activity so we need to import the button so we type import android dot widget dot button and it is going to import the button for us now the next thing which we want to do is that we want to use this relative layout as well as buttons into our on create method so we go in here and then we create objects for these so first we create the object for relative layout so we type relative layout and let's name the object as my layout so we type my layout equals new relative layout and in the parameters we are going to specify this